I don't know about you, but for the past several days, I have been wrapped, wrapped with the news, because this has been quite a week, quite a historic week, has it not? Where we as a nation are trying to figure out what kind of nation we might wind up being, what our values will be, what it means to be a representative democracy, a nation state with checks and balances, a republic where power is not absolute, a collection of souls that are, who are willing to be structured with actual rules that apply to all of us, not just some of us, that uphold the good of the whole and don't put a foot on someone's neck, especially on the neck of a woman, for example, as we heard about earlier, who spent 40 years in prison and died there and did not need to, in the last days of her cancer treatment, be stuck imprisoned. If the rules apply to everyone the same way, she would not have died that way. So thank you for your advocacy on this. And with all this news that surrounds us, we might look up and wonder, how can we pull it all off? Because it's just too much. But, with faith, the, what, the word but, with one T, not two, the word but is operative. And I want to think about this with you this morning for a moment, because in our world of complex and overwhelming problems, where it can seem like there really is no answer at hand, and it feels like the enemy's at the gate, and we spend all of our time yelling it can feel like too much, which it is. It is too much, but. And isn't that but the point of intercessory prayer? Look, when you're facing a problem that feels like too much, sometimes you might even forget that God is waiting to hear from you in that moment. And this happens to me all the time. If, in fact, it did very recently where we here in this community are faced with a very complex and difficult challenge that I'm not even allowed to talk about, but some of you may know about it. And I could not figure out what to do about this. And I kept thinking, like doing all this research, reading all this documentation, turning to experts, looking into all these places where it just felt like I came after wall, after wall, after wall, after wall. I could not figure out how to help this community think through this complex issue. And it was so overwhelming to me that I came one day, just in the quiet of the night, and I have the privilege of having the keys to this church. And I came right there in front of the altar, and I knelt down and I prayed. And I said, God, I really don't know what to do, but you put me here, and I need your help in thinking this through. And as I stood up on my feet, God said to me, child, the answer is right in front of you, and you've been looking right past it. And as I stepped back from it, I had the faith to risk what wound up being the answer, or an answer. And I thought, why didn't I come to God sooner? Because everything was so hard, but if I had first just ask God for help in all that discernment I was trying to do. Instead of just researching, I could be discerning. And that but is the insertion of the faith that God will have help in our problems. And you too might be looking right past a solution that is right in front of you, but, but God, God will show it to you. You may feel like you're at the end of a rope, but, but God will help you to hold on anyway. And your prayer acknowledges this. You may need to get on your knees, or if you can't do that, which a lot of you can't, however you assume a posture of prayer and supplication, and just say, yes, Lord, it's too much. Yes, God, I don't know how to pull it off, but I know, I know that with you I can do something different that your intervention is my provision. 
and I can't do it, God. I can't handle it, but with you, all things are possible. It just takes a teensy little bit of faith, the smallest bit. And as Jesus tells us here in the parable of the mustard seed, and I want to show you what size we're talking about here. Can you see this? No, No, that's the whole point. It's that tiny. It's just a tiny little seed, and all it takes is this teensy bit of risking, risking believing that God can insert an answer into your problems. God can give you an answer that will help you. All you need is this tiny bit. And then what happens when you plant a seed? It grows with cultivation. Now, if I plant a seed, I don't know if it'll grow. But with God's help, all kinds of things can happen. And I think that's the whole message with faith, is that as we see ourselves even headed to hell in a handbasket, we can resist with our faith. Faith is having everything stacked against us, but we fight anyway. Faith is trying every option we can and failing and then asking for another try because there is a chance. Faith is saying, God, come on in. And we may not feel like we have all that much strength to pull it off, but with this minuscule amount of faith and with God, all things are possible. Now, Jesus says that a mustard seed faith can pull a tree out of its roots from the ground. And I don't know about you, but I have yet to pull that off. It's not really within my capacity. But every time I have felt like I just, I couldn't do, take another step, and then I took one anyway, what Jesus is saying is that that is just as miraculous as a tree coming out of the ground. And you can do that with me, Jesus says. I know sometimes I feel like in all these struggles we face, I feel very much like David, you know, with a little slingshot, ready to just try to take on Goliath and all the justice work we do and all the ways that we try to offer and live out our love. And it just feels like we have no chance of winning because a slingshot is so big against the empire, for example. But, but God's against that empire too. And where we might struggle and where we might stumble, God has faith and is faithful. So I said earlier that a lot of the news this week has been overwhelming me. But one story really brought me to a very different place in my faith journey. And I want to tell you about it because you might have missed it. And it's actually one of the more disturbing stories I've ever heard. But it was 8 o'clock on Monday morning at Kingsbridge subway station up in the Bronx. And there was a sweet girl, four years old, with her father, standing right there on that platform as the four train approached. And on the phone with her mother, the father said these last words before leaping to his death with his little girl in his arms. He said to her, Con Dios, con Dios, que allí viene el tren. With God, with God, he said, here comes the train. And if you've heard this story, I feel like I want to insert an interpretation into this that gives a faith perspective of how I process this as a pastor. Because as horrific as what we heard about this story was, there is a but. There is a but. Because we pray with the pain and the contusions that this man's mind must have gone through in thinking through that this was a solution to obviously what was a horrible situation for him. Yes, we pray. But we also acknowledge that he did the, as he did the unthinkable, the child survived. Unharmed. This baby made it. And though her father was at the brink and took her over it, that 
sweet baby made it without a scratch on her body. And I think we're in a world where we need to proclaim miracles every now and then. We need to hear about times when intervention came in one way to, to turn back the tide of what should have been the inevitable physically. And it doesn't always happen, but when it does, we need to talk about it and we need to give thanks to the God who has that faith, who will jump onto the tracks with us you know what faith does every time? It alerts us. It says, yes, this may feel like the worst, but, but if we as a community can rally around this child and rally around every single child who finds themselves on the brink, every single child of God who is hanging over the edge and needing some intervention, human first, before it even has to get to God, if we can all rally around these situations and see them as the necessity of a life of faith, if we can bring help to the people who are suffering the very worst so that when they stand on the edge, that the edge of a train track doesn't feel like a path to freedom. If and but. And God lives in the if and the but. You can remember that it only takes this tiny reminder of God's provision, power, and love for you, and that you can surpass whatever you are facing with help. And help exists. And our job in community, I really want to share some of these mustard seeds with you. Because the truth is that, as I'm told, since I know nothing about gardening, when you plant a seed, likely you're not just going to plant one, right? But you're going to plant a whole bunch of them and give them a chance to be cultivated. And you each can have a seed or a handful of them. And I'm going to pass this around and hope you'll take some. And remember that you're not being planted by yourself. And this is what community is. This is why we invite people to join the church. Because God is planting a seed within us right now that we need to have other seeds around us to grow to so that we can shine in the light and flourish with God's help. For this, look around and see your partners in flourishing. Even y'all online. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.